Well, I'm here at the World Bank in Washington, D.C. It's the first time I've been here, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, with Edward Anderson. Um, so, Edward, nice to see you again. So, you've been telling us today about a sanitation hackathon event. Well, first, first and second of December. Correct. Tell me what it's about. Well, sanitation hackathon, it's almost a misnomer. It's really a, almost a year-long process to engage different ideas, raise the appetite for risk-taking and innovating in the sanitation sector which really means um, issues around hygiene, toilets, open defecation, pit latrines, wastewater treatment and management. So we have a lot of experts in the bank whose job it is really to work with governments and local communities to raise awareness that the toilet is one of the world's most cost-effective health technologies. Yeah. And yet 2.5 billion people in the world today don't have access to improved sanitation. 1.2 billion don't have any toilet facilities at all. And you have a billion people in the world today that have a mobile phone but no toilet. So how does this change the paradigm, the realities, and what opportunities exist to leverage the mobile network, social media behaviors today, to influence awareness and behavior change around sanitation? Yeah. Now you have, you, you have quite an interesting role here at, at the bank because in, in many ways you're trying to show people inside this bank, the bank, the World Bank, how new models of innovation can happen on the outside. Absolutely, I mean, I think that's part of the, the story here. The, Open source community and open innovation principles, I think, are really beginning to show impact in the way government delivers service. Government is traditionally quite far behind the curve to private sector in adopting innovation. So I think our job is not really to invent a new technology or to um, develop a new software product, but it's really how do we shift the curve of government innovation path closer to the private sector one? How do we show and demonstrate those methodologies, those partnerships, those engagements that help us shift that curve yeah so give me some vital statistics I mean who you know how many what sort of places okay so involved? I mean concretely sanitation hackathon is, is starting with a traditional physical hacking activity which is December 1 and 2 it's the weekend before World Toilet Summit um, it's going to be so it's nicely timed and we've timed that deliberately yeah absolutely yeah so um, it's going to have a series of build-up events um, on November 19th is World Toilet Day, so we're hoping to have a number of tech engagements around problem statements. Yeah. So in the run-up to the hackathon, experts have met with community members, they've met with government counterparts, they've met with ICT experts, sanitation and ICT, to discuss problems, to really describe what is important to that community, what is important at scale, what are the problems and the opportunities around information flow, management, yeah. gamification, behavior change. And we're disseminating it throughout November culminating with this physical convening of hackers in 10 to 20 different cities around the world. And most of them are in locations, I mean, in developing countries. Correct. And, and part of the objective is to go to new cities that don't have that much experience with the hackathon phenomenon, because what we really are about is engaging the government, the service provider, the tech community, and the citizens and beneficiaries together. So we have sites like Pune, India, uh, last year we were in Bangalore, it was very successful, so now yeah. we're going to Pune. We have Lahore in Pakistan, Dakar, Bangladesh, Jakarta, Indonesia, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, Cape Town, South Africa, Manila, Philippines, Great. Lima, Peru. Yeah. And so the, the physical hackathon is a way for different groups to meet each other, look at the problem statements, work on something, but it doesn't end there. It's really just the beginning of well, the this process. Is something, I think this is something you've said you've learned since doing the water hackathon. It's, it's, it's more of a, it's like a nine-month process, you're really saying, not, right. not, a, not a weekend. Well, I think you know, this is constantly trying to evolve the model. In water hackathon, what we felt worked well that was a real lesson learned was investing heavily in problem statements in advance of the hackathon. We raised 113 problems. Two thirds of those were actually worked on actively by hackers. And yeah, it was great. I mean, I was a I was a judge on the London event, and it was fantastic to see. So we were very very happy with that. So not just did we get a body of really good problems around water and sanitation, but we got some really good attention and prototypes coming out. About fifty six prototypes. Five or six of those were good enough to be implemented right away, yeah. but of the others, two thirds of the hackers said in a survey that three months later they were still working on their problem. So this was, I think, a weakness, a space we're really trying to tap this time around. How do we support those teams for that two to three months process? They've met each other at the hackathon, they've got that energy, that inspiration, they've got an idea they want to tackle. There's a real client, there's a real world problem waiting for this solution. So we're going to offer an online hack at home contest. So a subset of the global problems will continue and teams can register to keep working on them and they'll get mentorship, guidance on business, 
on the sanitation issues, on the technology issues. And obviously the sponsors are also going to offer physical support, like right. a co-working space to work out as well as advice and testing with the data and the field benefits. And I think that's one thing that I, I see from this that's exciting, and I think sometimes people involved won't, is, is, is that actually the people in this kind of organisation in the World Bank will actually be watching these people at work and, and looking at these approaches. Absolutely. And, We're really you know. requiring that submitters of problem statements become owners for it. Yeah. So right. these people should be available to provide feedback, to mentor, and they're really they're tracking anyone that subscribes to their problem statement to say, I want to work on this. Lovely. Okay, so um, well, you've got a site up here. What, what's the uh, URL? I know it's evolving all the time. Right now it's called sanitationhackathon.org. Do visit, uh, have a look at the problems, subscribe for a problem, have a look at the events where there's a city near you, register to be involved. It's going to keep growing. We want to see more and more problems. As the hackathon happens, we'll also see solutions and prototypes coming on board. And this site really should evolve into a commons Good. of Great. different codes and applications. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks, Edward. Cheers. Thank you, Mark.